So before I get started, uh, I really want to know how many of y'all got up Saturday morning at 4 a.m. to watch King George? Three, four, five, six, maybe seven or eight. Okay. All right. Well, that's impressive. I did not. Um, I watched about 60 seconds of it uh, on Saturday morning, but that has nothing to do with what we're talking about today, but really was just more, just curious. Um, so this morning, we're going to be talking about uh, the four most important decisions of your entire life. And a- as we dive into this, and y'all are thinking about other ones, these are just some that, uh, that I came up with. But if you think of other ones, I really I want y'all to write them down and share them with me, okay? Because I may use them in the future uh, on, on Baccalaureate Sunday. So y'all be thinking about that. And if you don't like mine, don't, don't tell me because um, y'all hurt my feelings. I'm kidding. So um, as we dive in, I want you to to pray with me uh, and for me this morning. Father, this morning, may we hear your voice today as we study your word. And may we, upon understanding your word, may we believe it. And in believing it, may we obey it. And in obedience, may we be scattered from this place in the days that lie ahead of us to make much of Christ. We ask this humbly in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, so the first one, I think it's going to be on the screen, says, is Jesus the Lord of your life? And so I want to ask you, like, what do you think about, what do you believe about a being that came to earth and said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life? Um, And later you'll hear a verse that he says, I am the gate, right? No one comes uh, but through me. So um, there's a a gal, her name is Jackie Hill Perry. She's a speaker, author. She has spoken at Passion Camps and, uh, not Passion Camps and Passion Conference, rather. Um, She uh, she says this. She says that the, the way that we define God must be defined by how he defines himself as holy. So the way that we have to define God is the way he defines himself. And so how does he define himself? Um, John 14, 5 through 7 says that Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Um, Have y'all ever seen the show Duck Dynasty? Anybody? I know it's kind of getting older now, but um, I used to watch a lot of that. Um, One of the daughters of Willie is is Sadie. She is uh, now a a Christian speaker, author, and podcaster. She said this one time. She said that not all truth sets you free, but the truth sets you free. Your truth doesn't set you free. The truth that came 2,000 years ago and died on a cross and rose again sets you free. So I think about that. We can make up uh, things that that we may uh, deem as as true um, in, in our own lives, but it's only one truth that sets us free. There's only one truth that carries the weight of our sin, and that is the one that says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. John 10, uh, 9 through 10 says that I am, Jesus, this is Jesus, he says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So in, in order for us to have this abundant life that Jesus talks about, uh, we have to be in full, complete obedience to Jesus. So um, I just want to share this analogy. Just, let's just pretend that I, I'm trapped in some sort of sin. And I hope that there is somebody here in this room, somebody in, the, in our church that would come along beside me as a brother or sister in Christ and say, dude, there is, Jesus has a better way, Right? Jesus has a better way. Jesus has an abundant life outside of this sin that you're in bondage to waiting on you. I hope somebody in this room would have the, the courage to come along beside me as, 
uh, a brother or sister in Christ and, and, and point me back towards Jesus. And as students, as we talked about earlier, um, it matters who you surround yourself with, right? The people that we surround ourselves with, they gonna, they're going to pull us closer to Jesus. They're going to pull, pull us farther away from Jesus. Um, so the people that we include in our innermost circle is vital. We want those people to be people that are passionately in love with Jesus. Because if they are, they're going to encourage us and push us closer to Jesus as well. And we know that God's blessings um, are found in God's boundaries. So something else that Jackie Hill Perry said one time was that, you know, it matters what we believe about God. Um, it's what we believe about God, rather, that determines how we behave. Or, or it's what we believe about God that, that determines what we believe about sin and what we believe about Jesus, what we believe about holiness. So again, ask, is Jesus the Lord of your life? Is Jesus sanctifying you day by day, month by month, year by year? Sanctifying is just a, a big fancy word for making us more like Jesus, making us more holy, right? Is, is, is Jesus sanctifying our thought life? Is Jesus sanctifying our language? Is he sanctifying our heart? Is he sanctifying our temper? Is he sanctifying our heart? Constantly. All right, number two. Y'all ready? Ready? Graduates, ready? All right, number two. Here we go. Uh, number two is, how do you view Scripture? So is Scripture, is it holy and divinely inspired, or is it not? Is it, uh, is it Scripture our authority, or is it not? Is it true, or is it false? Um, can I be only obedient to parts of it? Can I pick and choose the stuff out of it that I like and the stuff I don't like? Just don't worry about it. Can I, uh, right, can I, can I make it say what I want it to say? Okay, so Hebrews 4.12 uh, says this. The author of Hebrews says that for, for the word of God is alive and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to divide soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So do we view scripture in that manner as if, as if this is, a double-edged sword? Is this our sword that we're going into, into battle with? If we're going into spiritual battle with, with the enemy and out into the world, is that how we view Scripture or is it not? I heard somebody say one time that, that when we exchange the God of Scripture for the God of self, that we can justify anything, right? If we exchange the God of Scripture for the God of self, we justify anything. So think about this. Um, we're driving, um, and there's signs on the road, right? If, if we don't obey the signs, we're not going to get where we need to go. Right? We can read them all day and just drive past them and say, oh, this is the exit I need to take, or I was supposed to take. Well, we got to turn around, do a U-turn. If we're not obedient to the, to the signs on the roads, we're going to get lost. We're not going to know where to go. We're gonna just going to, who knows where, where we're going to end up, right? So... Um, and the same, the same is with the, the traffic lights. Everybody knows how traffic lights work, I think. They, green means to go. Red means to stop. Yellow means what? Press the gas faster or no? Okay. <laughs> All right. So if, if we, what happens if we change that? And we want to say that red means go, green means stop. What's going to happen? Accidents, chaos is going to ensue, right? If we get out here on Old Canton and, and, and we change the, the rules of how traffic works, bad things are going to happen to us. So when we, um, when we want to change what God has, has divinely given to us, um, bad things are going to happen. Um, so how do we view Scripture? John Ed Matheson, Matheson is, a, is a pastor, retired United Methodist pastor that, that I admire. And he said one time that, that God's word gives us boundaries and he doesn't make mistakes. God's word gives us boundaries and he doesn't make mistakes, right? Um, I love that. Another uh, guy that I really admire is Dr. Bill Urey that was at Wesley Biblical for many years. And, and he gave the definition of what a commandment is, one of God's commandments. So what, what does that mean? He said that a commandment is a picture of who God is and a promise of what we can become. 
right? A commandment is a picture of who God is. This is who he is. And a promise of what we can become. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about this, like how we physically treat Scripture matters, right? So um, it, it matters. It, it tells us how, how respectful we are of it or how not respectful we are of it. And uh, there's a at my former church that I was at, there's a senior adult Sunday school, and there was a, a guy in that class, a retired United Methodist pastor named Brother Johnny Dinas. And Brother Johnny Dinas was one of the most holy men uh, I've ever met. One of the closest thing, physical thing to Jesus that I've ever met in my entire life. And he, in their, in their classroom, they had, in every chair, they had a, a Bible and a Cokesbury hymnal. Y'all remember Cokesbury hymnals, the little brown hymnals? A few of you, okay. So every single chair had, had that in, in their classroom. And Brother Johnny was very adamant about the, the Bible had to be on top of the hymnal and sitting in the chair, right? When they, when they left the classroom for, for the, the morning, and the Bible had to be on top of the hymnal, not the hymnal on top of Scripture. That showed how high, how much he respected and uh, cared about God's Word. It's like, we're not putting the hymnals because the hymnals aren't scripture. They, they have a lot about scripture in them. It's like, but they're not, they're not this, right? So, and, and that taught me a lot about how to, to treat the Bible. And, and with our students, I, I try to uh, instruct them, uh, if, if we're passing Bibles around, don't chunk them. Don't throw them uh, t- to each other, right? Because it shows, it tells us how much we care and respect what God has given us. I've got a friend, um, actually it's Daniel Wright's brother, he went, to a, uh, he went to Dubai a couple of times on a mission trip, and I, one of the things that I remember him telling me was, was how the Christians in, in that Arab country tr- treated and respected the Bible. They would never think about putting the Bible on the floor, because the floor was dirty. The, the floor is where our dirty feet have trod, right? And so it was dirty, it was unclean. And out of respect for God's word, they don't put it on the floor. And uh, they, they would put it on a table, they would put it on their bed, put it on a pillow, something. But it never goes on the floor. And so what is our view of scripture, right? Do we respect it for what it, uh, what it really is? Number three is this. Um, and this is, is possibly down the road for you guys, but I wanted to, I threw this in there, is if you plan to get married, who is that person going to be? Who are you going to marry, right? Um, Craig Rochelle is a pastor that, that I admire. He's the pastor of Life Church, and, and I heard him say one time that our purpose isn't to be married. It's to be wholly devoted to Jesus. Our purpose isn't to be married. It's to be wholly devoted to Jesus. Ephesians 5 is a very popular verse, or scriptures, on marriage, and it says this, uh, 5, 22 through 27 says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should su- submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. So, girls, I'm talking to you, and also, Daniel, I'm talking to you too, but girls, y'all look for a guy that is going to love you like Christ loves the church. That's the guy you want. If he doesn't do that, He's not the one, okay? Deal? Deal. Okay, good. All right. Um, And look for a guy that's going to be the spiritual leader of your family, okay? And the spiritual leader of you as well. That's the one, okay? Um, So, Daniel, I'm talking to you. This Daniel, not that Daniel. Um, uh, Daniel, we want you to, once you get there, love your wife as Christ loves the church, right? That's what God calls us to do sacrificially 
love your spouse. So uh, something else Craig Rochelle said is, is don't give someone your heart if God doesn't have theirs. Think about that. Don't give somebody your heart if God does not have theirs. So we want to be searching for somebody that's going to bring you closer to Jesus. Um, that's going to bring both of you closer to Jesus, not farther from Jesus. Uh, Psalm 34.3 says, glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Taking it out of context a little bit. That's not talking about, in its context, it's not talking about marriage. But it's talking about just as the church, let's glorify the Lord together. Exalt his name together. And I think that's a beautiful picture of a marriage. Let's glorify the Lord together and exalt his name together. Okay? Lastly, coming in for a landing. Number four. Y'all ready? What is God's given purpose? What is your God-given purpose? Okay? I'm going to read a verse, and I want you all to listen for um, a calling of purpose in this psalm, okay? Psalm 145, 1 through 5 says, I exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise your name and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. From one generation commends your works to another, right? That sounds like purpose to me. All of us, not just our graduates. Our purpose, according to this, is we want to pass down from the, the generation coming behind us everything that Jesus has done. We want them to know about Jesus. We want them to devote their lives to Jesus. Everything. That is our purpose, right? Um, I will exalt you as God, my King. I will praise your name forever. That's our purpose on this earth. Is that right there, to praise God's name forever. Tony Evans is a uh, Priscilla Shire's dad, uh, if you know that name. He's a pastor in Texas, and he said that the gospel is not just a ticket to get to heaven. It's also an open door to bring heaven to earth through you, right? That's purpose. Our God-given purpose is to bring heaven to earth through you, through all of us. Um, Somebody else said this, and I love it. It said, let Scripture dictate our desires and dreams, right? Let, let's let Scripture dictate our purpose. Let Scripture dictate my desires and my dreams. Not the world, not TikTok, not Instagram, not Facebook. I don't want that dictating my desires and dreams. I want Scripture to be dictating my desires and dreams. And uh, somebody said this, that what? What Jesus has planned for you is a whole lot more fun than what you have planned for you, okay? What Jesus has planned for you is a whole lot more fun than what you had planned. I love that. Um, this verse is, last verse, Colossians 3.17 says, uh, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So whatever we do, wherever we find ourselves in school, um, or at work, wherever, do everything, um, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord. Um, as the band comes up, band can come on forward. Um, Y'all, just uh, in closing to our, our four graduates this morning, that your mission field is going to change a little bit. It's gonna, you're going to be in a different zip code from where you are now in Madison. So your, your mission field is going to change to that new zip code, okay? So your, your school's campus, your uh, sorority, your fraternity, your apartment, your dorm room, whatever that looks like for you, your classroom, that is going to become your new mission field, okay? And so we want our church, St. Matthew's, we want you guys to know Jesus and to make him known wherever it is that you go. That's what we want. We want you guys to be um, the spiritual leaders of your peers, the spiritual leaders of your sororities, the spiritual leaders of your friend group, whatever that looks like for you guys. Like, that is what we uh, desire most, is for y'all to deny yourselves and take up your cross and to follow Jesus and whatever he has planned for you in this next chapter of your life. Let's pray together.